Okay, so for the last day of the class, uh, we need to work on some more JavaScript stuff. Uh, we've got that user input that we need to work on a little bit more. We've also got um, user agent detection that we will be doing a little bit later for our um, adaptive web design concept. And then uh, we should also be able to cover the uh, geolocation features of the project. So I've got a copy of today's work in my flash drive, 929. And in the mobile project, go ahead and open CSS, JS, and HTML files. Not the uh, supporting ones. We don't need those, of course. We're not ever really going to edit those. Those are already set up and compressed. We don't really touch those. We're going to be in our own external files. So open those three, codica.css, codica.js, and index. Open all three of them in Notepad. And then I'm going to run the project just to remind myself where I am at. It was a whole two days ago. So I will run that. And then in Firefox, uh, we had added some uh, functionality previously, but the big idea was under the About screen, we have Personalize that asks for a name. So if I put a name, the name is then taken and used throughout the project. In this case, it didn't remember that we were. Here you go. It didn't remember that uh, we were. Uh, we had put in a name because at that point, at this point, the um, the whole web browser has been restarted. Uh, the local storage object was deleted, uh, so that would make sense. Uh, we completely deleted it when we restarted the computer. But once we get it, this to be an actual app, it's going to remember all of that stuff that you saved because um, the nature of it, it does, it does store it permanently, unless you delete or uninstall the app. So it's got my name throughout it, and I want to work on that a little bit more because now if I close the browser, Um, it should remember, but if I didn't have a name there, let's see, I'll run it in Chrome. If I did not have a name, I might get welcome undefined. Depending on the browser, I think it worked just fine in Firefox, but I loaded it in Chrome and it was a little bit more literal. And here it's looking for uh, a name, but there, but there's no name, so. Uh, it says undefined. We need to deal with that. Yes? Yes, to a certain point. Uh, I think also if, if you're in private browsing mode as well, incognito mode, I, I don't think it stores it permanently also. So there are some limitations to it as a web project. Um, and then when we get it as a mobile device, if you ever poke around on the, your app's screen, of your device, there is a part for you to also kind of clear the cache of an app. So there are ways to completely remove it. The data, we could save it to a local file on the memory card, and that way it's much more permanent when we get to that. OK, so I want to deal with this. Uh, it may be uh, undefined input. Let's go back to our code, our uh, JavaScript, to see what happened. Our JavaScript file is just 16 lines at the moment. The get name function was executed or was run when we clicked the button. I have not clicked the button in Chrome, so there was no name. But it then still tried to run show name. This function was out there being called all by itself. The code runs from top to bottom, it gets to line 16, it runs it. So then it backs up to show name. And then still can display the local storage object. 
there is no local storage object. So Chrome gave me undefined. It looks like Firefox ignored it and was just empty. So we need to deal with that. What if there's no local storage object? Then don't try to show anything. If there is a local storage object, then show it. So here's where we need to do a little bit of um, decision making. We need to engage in uh, conditional statements. We need to use logic for it to do something, not just blindly follow steps. So we're going to redefine a little bit our show name function because we need to check on some conditions. Give yourself a new line before the welcome message HTML here. Before this happens, we want something else to happen. We'll set up our um, skeleton here of an if statement. I'll set it up as we're going to use it. So on the first line, we haven't uh, talked about this. This is a way to make a decision, a choice. Uh, that if and then else. You have these sorts of decision making statements, conditional statements in every language. <coughs> Some decision needs to be made. It might be this one or this one, so do that. And we're going to check for something to happen within this first parentheses here. It's going to check and it's going to check if it's true. So if I had uh, one greater than um, zero, it checks, is one greater than zero? The answer is yes. One is more than zero. That became that becomes a yes. So anything within these first curly braces is executed. And this could be hundreds of lines of code. Okay, if I had one greater than two, is one greater than two? No, false. So it skips the first block of code here and goes to the second block. It's either going to be true or else it'll be false. So it does the rest here. This is a quick way to make a very simple decision, yes or no, true or false. We can get more complex, of course. Uh, we can check for one thing, and okay, what about if we check for another thing, and what about if we check for a third thing? We have three possibilities that we can check for. If none of those happen, it, it all ultimately goes to else. We can have if else, we can have if else. Oh, I'm sorry, else if. Um, so different ways to check statements. <coughs> what I'm trying to check here is, is there a name that is stored in the local storage object? Yes or no? Yes, then display it on screen. No, don't display it on screen. There's nothing to display. So inside of if, we'll type local storage dot username. That's the particular object where I've expected to save a name. <coughs> Space equals equals equals. That's three equal signs. With numbers, we can do one greater than two, one less than or equal to three. We can also do is one equal to one. If we were trying to do that, one equal one, that's not checking on the condition. That is saying assign the value 1 to the object 1. Equal has mostly been an assignment operator for us. Take what's on the right, put it what's on the left. Well, if we want to check equality, we have double equals. This will check is 1, 1. And that could be actually a little bit of fuzzy math because a 1 as a numeric type could equal a 1 as a string type. This could be true right here. 1 with no quotes is a number. 1 with quotes is a string. And they look the same to me. Technically, they're not. But JavaScript is a little bit loose with types. It's known as a weak typed or weakly typed language. A 1 could equal a 1. A numeric could equal a string if it's necessary. So the way to be sure, are we checking for a 1 that is a number against a 1 that is a string? It's triple equals. This will then become false. 1 number does not equal 1 string. 1 number could equal a 1 string with double equals. So here then, to be the most sure, 
we're saying is local storage username is it equal to undefined. You saw a moment ago I loaded it in Chrome. Um, and so Chrome, when it saw there was nothing in the local storage object, said undefined. So we're checking. Is the local storage object undefined? So we'll say, if that happens, we'll say console log no name saved yet. Nothing really happens on screen. Nothing has to happen on screen. The user doesn't know that a name should appear there. Of course, I could set up some code that if this condition is met, it'll pop up and tell the user, don't forget to customize your app, and then they can go over to put their name. But for the moment, we'll say that nothing happens. Well, we have the possibility of that local storage is undefined, or else it's not undefined, which means it is defined. The opposite of no is yes. So we'll say that else is, okay, it must be defined. If it's not defined, it must be defined. So in the else part is, we will, is where we will move, cut and paste, displaying the name. Yes? Uh, y3 equals signs. Y3 equals signs. Like I just said, if you've got a 1 equal to 1, that will assign what's on the right to the left. If you've got a doubles equal, this will, this will check for equality, but if you've got different data types, like a number or a string, that may still be true even though it's not. So if we say tr three equals signs, that means check what the values are and if they are the same type. Is a one numeric the same as a one string? No. So what is the type of undefined? undefined is its own type, which is undefined. So it's a little recursive thing. The undefined type is undefined. Um, so if we uh, then do have a name, display the name on screen. Make sure you move your, your, your welcome.html up to the else part. We don't want that to happen unless we've checked. Can we do this? I'm going to save. I had run it in Firefox, so there should be a name there already. There's my name that I typed a moment ago. I did not have a name yet in Chrome, so I'm going to run it in Chrome. I'm not getting undefined anymore. If I look at my console, Chrome is saying no name yet. The condition it was asked. Is local storage undefined? Yes or no? In this case, yes. So the console simply says some output. The user doesn't really need anything at this point. If I look at my console in Firefox, I get something similar. Or actually, nothing. We didn't program anything for that, so my console is empty. But if I had also set here on the else, I could have written some console output as as well. This is a very simple um, condition to check. And we actually have a few other possibilities that could happen. Um, if I go back to Firefox, go to About, Personalize. Well, this time, if I cancel, Welcome Null, clicking OK takes the name. Clicking Cancel returns a null object of type null. So null is also a type of null. So, OK, here's another thing we need to check for. This, right now, technically, the null got saved to my local storage object. If I run it again without typing anything, welcome null, it remembers that. Again, that's uh, I have to figure out these various possibilities. 
in my mind, I think it's going to work just fine, as I've always seen before, but as I beta test this, actually alpha test this, I'm seeing that uh, there's these possibilities that maybe I didn't think about. So here, if I click cancel, it becomes null. That's another thing, then, I need to check in my condition. That's something that I can check for. I can say, okay, what if it's undefined? Don't display anything. What if it's null? Don't display anything. If, it, if it's none of those, then it must be else, and then I can write it on screen. So we can have a couple of statements being evaluated at the same time. Is it this, or this, or this? So what we'll do is let's wrap another pair of parentheses around, around this. We also have double here and double here. Make sure you've got double on both sides. This pair of parentheses is the purpose to get a result from this expression. This is like if I had 1 plus 2 times 3 divided by 4. You're going to get different results if you add up these right here, 3 times 6 divided by 4 as opposed to the order of operation should be 2 times 3, 6 divided by 4, then plus 1. There's an order of operations in math that says multiplication goes before addition, exponents go before blah blah blah, and one of them is parentheses. If I were to have said 3 divided by 4 in parentheses, that's going to happen first. Then it'll multiply that result by 2, because multiplication is second importance, and then plus, which is one of the lower importances. So putting up parentheses like this, I'm saying, okay, 1 uh, plus 2, definitely do that. 3. 3 divided by 4, you know, 0.75. So uh, 3 times 0.75, then the multiplication happens last. So what we're trying to do up here is check this statement and we'll check another statement. The, um, the possibility is that this might be undefined, what the user, if there's no name it might be undefined. If the user presses cancel, that might be null. So we'll say between those last two parentheses, We'll put the pipe character, and hardly everyone, anyone uses it. It's a backslash, shift backslash. You should see backslash right above your enter key. Right, we've got slash, which is the question mark. We've got backslash, which is above enter. Shift backslash is the pipe character. It's a vertical line. Older keyboards had that as a broken vertical line for some reason. We need two of them two vertical lines, two pipes. And that means or check if this is true or check if something else is true. So we're now we're checking for two possibilities, which I will then enclose in another pair of parentheses. I'm putting them in the parentheses like I had a moment ago about do the one and the two, one plus the two, and do the 3 divided by the 4 as separate things, and then multiply those together. I'm sort of forcing an order of operations. Parentheses take precedence. And this time we're saying, in, the, in, the, in this pair of parentheses, local storage dot username, that's our object, check if, so triple equals, and this time uh, null should actually be in quotes, Now we're saying is um, is local storage no? Did the person click cancel? So it could be that it's undefined. They never typed anything. It could be cancel that they cancel, or it could be null that they canceled it. If none of those are true, then write it. Let's see if mine works. So. A moment ago, my Firefox, I, I did null, I did cancel. So if I run that again, you 
saw a moment ago, it said null. I had canceled the input, therefore null was saved. Now it's checking, was null saved? If it was, don't even display it. And maybe a little console output, but null had been saved over on Chrome. Same thing. Nothing gets displayed because I don't have the proper input. Then we've got um, then we've got our, our check that goes on like this. Check for this possible statement, this possible result. Is it undefined? Or check for this one. Is it null? If, if any of those two are true, then we execute the code within the first block. This one may be false. It's not undefined. The person wrote something. But we saw that if we click cancel, it could be null. So if either of those are true, that's what the or is saying. The first one or the second one. Uh, here's another possibility. If I go over to go, to go to a name, click personalize, and I said, uh, whatever, click OK, and then close that. Welcome, ghost. Because I didn't type anything, nothing is not really, I mean, empty is not really nothing. The empty space character is a character, ASCII code 32. So even an empty space is something. And so it thought we saved an empty character. That doesn't trip any of our checks here. By clicking OK, we saved an empty character. We didn't account for any of that here. So it let it go through, and it wrote comma space local storage which is empty exclamation point and it looks like this welcome ghost so we've got a third possibility to check here is local storage undefined is local storage null is local storage empty so here's another or space or space parentheses is it undefined or is it null or is it empty? Local storage dot username equals 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 space quote end quote. Nothing in between it, not even a space, because then we're checking is there did the person press spacebar? Double quotes there, that's empty. Did the person click OK? Accidentally. That's a third condition. And going back through it, that's why I said about those parentheses. So there should, if you click on the first parenthesis, you should see its pair at the end of there before the curly brace. And then a, another one because that one closes the check for empty. And then another pair because that checks for null. And another pair that checks for undefined. Yes? Uh, this last uh, condition actually the Name. Yes, uh, we're about to get to that because we're going to need something like that for get name. We're doing it for show name because if you load, I'm testing it in the way that if I load my project brand new, it will do show name. So we will get back to get name. You're, you're right about that. But for the moment, we're dealing with show name as if a person loads the project at this moment. <laughs> then I, I'm sorry for their parents. Yes, we could do the name of null. Let's give that a try. Now, how are they going to spell it? Capital null? Because that's different than lowercase null. 
So watch this. If we yeah, we can double check it. I'm pretty sure it's got to be in quotes, but that's why we'll check it. Um, so if I have put in null, is the person going to write capital null like that? That is going to accept it because it's not what I'm checking for, lowercase null. But you're right. Let's check what happens. Um, you know, if I if I put lowercase null, it should hit it because I put in quotes lowercase null. I'll put it without quotes and we'll see what happens, but I'm pretty sure we need to so see. I literally wrote null and it says welcome null. Let's see what happens if I don't put null in quotes, but I believe we do need it. Let's confirm. That's the cool thing. We can always check these things. So um, I'm going to cancel that. That should have hit null. Saying welcome null. Let me put something else there. Looks like we do need the quote. Because if I'm here and I cancel that, it is taking it as null. So it doesn't seem like we should, but we should have a quote around that. And if a person is, is, is you know, null smith. We have to do other things to account for that. There could be some other possibilities that happen with saving the, the name. Um, let's say that's what we have as ideas for the moment. Uh, but again, if you think about it, this is happening as if we are loading the, the website for the first time. I'm going to open this in... Uh, I've, I've never opened this project in in, in, in uh, Opera. If I open it in Opera, that's the whole point. If, I, if this were a real app that a person downloaded from the App Store right now, they have never saved their name. So what's happening is the show name is being tripped, is being run. And if I check my console, that's what it should be saying, that there's no name here. Console, right there. Do all of this, if that we're checking is for show name. We should do the same thing, though, for when the name is actually saved. We should um, check for good input at the moment of input. Uh, here, this is working, but before we get into problems, perhaps we should check at that point if, um, if, if they entered something valid. Let me check that right now. So uh, I'm going to go to About. Personalize, I'll put nothing, I'll just click OK. Still seem to have done it, huh? Oh, because that's what we need to do about the input. I think this will get fixed once we do the input. Once we have get or save name, what are we calling it? Get name. Once we do get name, it should fix that part. Notice if I refresh it, it's not save, It's not showing the emptiness, but we haven't dealt with trying to put into it empty. That's what we're going to do right now with get. So, with get name, we need to do something very similar in if else statement, with a few other things. So actually, the way this is, this whole if block, we can use it as is with a little tweaking. So I'm going to select lines 13 to 17. I'm going to select this if else checking, copy that. And I'm going to replace 9, since 9 does display on screen. That's not enough, so I'm going to delete line 9 and replace it with 13 to 17. That's my if else checking. So now what's happening is, at the moment that we're asking for the name, check for validity. Now we should do an alert, not just a console output. We should pop up and say, hey, you're trying to put the wrong, wrong thing. If it's, if it's undefined, it should not trip undefined at this point, but a cancel will trip a null, 
and clicking OK without typing anything will trip this. So perhaps just make it pop up to say, please enter a valid name. If you want to get very specific about what their error was, we have to think about what possible errors they could have made. Perhaps a switch statement would work there. Is it possibly this, possibly this, possibly this, possibly this, possibly this? We have to think of all of the possibilities of a mistake here if we want to get a much more specific error message. As I said before, as I'm paraphrasing, uh, you, you can't make anything foolproof because there are so many ingenious fools. So we would have to think of all the possibilities of how people could make mistakes um, to deal with those. Let's give this a try. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to refresh it in your browser. And uh, I'm going to personalize this time. I'll cancel. Please enter a valid name. OK, that might be too harsh. OK, this time I'll put nothing with just an OK. Please enter a valid name. Nothing shows up. As I'm saying here, OK, we have the possibilities of uh, canceling, which I uh, maybe we really shouldn't tell the user another pop-up, hey, you canceled it, put in a valid name. I didn't want to put a valid name. So let's fix that. Uh, we would need here a little bit more possibilities, a little bit more conditions to check. So uh, before, before, these, um, before these consoles, this console login alerts, let's add switch the switch statement this is allowing us to check certain possibilities it's similar to an if statement just another way to write it there are nuances why you would choose if versus switch just to show a possibility here's here's one um, switch works with some with some condition being asked and then we have results in cases so let's say case a, a, a colon. A, a, a. I'm going to write the basic skeleton first, just to show you how this how this is set up. This is a little bit of fake code at the moment. The A's and B's, of course, but um, I'll explain in a moment. So as you write this, the, the, the way this conditional statement works is we're going to check for something. And the result could be a particular case. Therefore, follow these lines of code, one or a thousand. Once you're finished with those lines of code break, don't look at anything else. Continue. Well, the possibility could have been B. So jump to the B part. Execute B, all of its lines of code in the B section break, we're done, continue on here. So we would have to think of all the possibilities here, and it can go as many possibilities as I need. If I didn't think of the possible possibility, if I didn't think of D possibility, or X possibility, default. If all else fails, here's one final set of possible steps for you to do, break, we're done. The point of this is um, the person might have canceled, which is not bad, or the person may have um, clicked OK, so then will pop up, uh, please enter a valid name. There could have been other possibilities. So we'll do local storage.username. So now it's sort of like we're asking, what's in the username? And the possibility that's in there is. Um, empty. So then we'll 
I'm going to move this alert into here. If the person just clicked OK, then that possibility happened, and they will pop up enter a valid name if they clicked OK. The possibility could have been then the null. They clicked cancel. Therefore, I'll put the console in there. It shouldn't be undefined, but I'll just put it in undefined. And I suppose um, I can put the same console log output there. default is well, uh, what happened, what what possibility did I not think of? So we'll have console log local storage. Show me what's in there. What's what's the, the thing that I didn't think of? The user won't get that result because I don't know what to do with it. But some console output will happen if all else fails. So I've got to double check in here. The very first one about, first of all, is it valid input? One of my three possibilities. Then I've got, well, what will I display on screen? If it's empty, make it say that. If they click cancel, don't do anything for the user. They canceled it. Um, I could further be more complex and depending what they wrote. What if the person had written admin? Then I could have a case admin that says welcome admin. Know, uh, log in to the secret area. Here's a possible way to check for a condition. I have to think of the condition and include it in the statement. So let me check if my code works. Um, if I were to cancel, nothing happens. Nothing is displayed. If I were to click OK, please enter a valid name. Now, I would close the pop-up. We don't quite have control of that. Well, I suppose we could do another prompt statement, uh, but at this point it still doesn't save it because it wasn't valid input. If I then put valid input, no no result comes out of that, but their name is there. Alright, is that it working for everyone? Are you getting your name to appear with a little bit of checking? Now let's say that uh, we want to want to avoid this. I seem to be, or someone seems to be trying to type in JavaScript into this input field. Well, I misspelled it, but um, okay, something got put in here. So this um, input forms are often a, a big attack vector for people to try to break into a system. And sometimes the code is executed 
if a person can figure out what code is running this system. Can I write then a code to break out of the system? This is a way that people have figured out how to break into systems. In input form, feed it valid code. Um, here, it didn't actually execute this code. Um, and so, checking for that kind of input is, is part of modern cybersecurity because if, uh, if we don't take these things into account, then um, they could obviously break our, our system. The way we're doing it here is with an alert that's built into JavaScript, but other times if we had you know some sort of input field, uh, so don't you don't have to write this, but if we had an input field of like input um, t uh, type text, you know, and uh, value hello. So if it was a plain old input field, there could be the possibility someone writes the right code to then break our code and get into the back end. We've got a JavaScript alert and we'll have other sort of pop-ups. So technically this pop-up that happened here is a prompt, a JavaScript prompt. And so it didn't execute the code, but I'm just getting you to think about uh, input forms are a way to possibly get your, hi your site hijacked. So what we'll do is we're going to strip out. We're going to remove characters um, because again they, they could be used to break our site. A person most likely is not going to have exclamation points and angle brackets and quotation marks in their name. Uh, yes, there's some very creative parents nowadays that give kids weird names, but they're not going to put a quote in their name and they're not going to put uh, you know, angle brackets in their names, hopefully. So what we're going to do is strip out some characters here. You see where we're trying to display username over on line um, 26. The username object um, whatever was stored there, display it. What we're going to do is uh, run, I think this is jQuery, we're going to run some jQuery code to strip out the characters that are not valid characters. So we're going to say dot replace. We have the replace method. We're going to look through what the person typed. We're then going to remove all non-valid characters and then display the valid characters. So we've got the replace method that we're using upon the username object. This is going to be a regular expression. This is going to be a very powerful um, concept called regular expressions which lets us search for text within a string and then replace and it starts off with a slash, a forward slash here, square brackets, Uh, the caret symbol, which is shift six, this little up pointing thing, that's a caret. And then a dash z. So basically, we're saying uh, if this is not letters a through z, lowercase, or letters a through z, uppercase, it's invalid. So it's not going to accept numbers. If we wanted numbers, we could also do 0 to 9. Let's say I don't want numbers yet. I only want letters. No exclamation point, no quotes, none of that. So the, the string that I'm looking for is, a, is anything from A to Z, uppercase or lowercase, slash, at, at the end of the bracket, slash G, which honestly at the moment I forget what that means, but um, maybe global, check the whole string something. If it does find a non-valid character, comma, quote, end quote, nothing in the middle there.
replace non-valid characters with an empty string. Just remove them, strip them out. Replace non-valid characters. Save it and run it. So I'm going to put in dash dash Victor plus 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 capitals numbers. So I'm putting in some uh, special characters. I'm putting in some numbers. Click OK. Just uh, my name. It took out the characters. It also took out the space. So you see this this can need a lot of work to get it to do exactly what you want. Here I'm assuming the person is just typing one name. You know, if they type Victor Gibberish. It's just Victor. Technically, we added that to the input. So it still saved whatever gibberish I typed. It's still in the object. And so it got displayed because I never dealt with that here. I'm just checking, is there something saved in the local storage? Great, display it. We didn't strip out any characters. We could do the exact same thing um, here. You can just simply copy that replace method. Dot replace that stuff, paste it into show username, show name. And so now if I if I run it, so we see that that's what's saved. And if we run it. And display it. This could be smarter, of course, because if we're developing, like, let's say, a social network, and we're asking to personalize, and I'm, you know, with uh, Victor 99, because Victor's already taken. So I put Victor 99, that's who I am. Well, it's, it's going to strip that out. It's still <coughs> saved in the object, but it's just not going to display it. So this could still be set up in a smarter way with more effort. Uh, for it to, you know, strip out the the symbols but not the numbers. If we just add um, zero to nine here, that will leave numbers. But then, with other complexity, we we need to create a much more complex regular expression. This this is which is checking our string. For an expression, uh, it would be it would need to be more complex, and uh, regular expressions crafting those could be tricky. So by putting zero to nine, it'll let me have um, numbers, which then means if a person simply types numbers, maybe that's their name, their username, maybe, 
and it'll allow it. So again, this could be smarter. Uh, we won't do much more with it because there's just so many possibilities of, of the input here that we have other things to, to worry about. Here's the code so far then. Um, Any questions? General questions? Yes. Just trying to like, understand the logic behind some of the way that this is written. Sure. Um, with those, where you have the different variables of A through Z and capital A through Z. Online 26, right here? Yeah. Um, since a lot of this code is so specific, it would seem to me that there would be a at least a space, and not maybe not space because it would count as a space, but between the lowercase z and the uppercase a, like, because it seems to me that it would be really writing or it would be reading it as a through z capital a, since they're right next to each other. It's, it's automatically detecting that it's just the first character after the dash. Yeah, it is, uh, you, you're right, you know, is, are we counting from a to z a? Maybe. Uh, you know, you're probably saying it would make more sense if it was spaced out like that, but right? I would expect that if you write it like that, it's going to not work. Yeah, exactly. So, yes, this is a very specific thing here. I, honestly, am not versed in regular expressions. I'm using my example that I've made before. But this is a whole big thing uh, how to write regex regular expressions. There's websites all over the place. Learn this because it is a complex thing. There's, like I just said, I forget what slash g does. I just know it works. But I can go look it up and somewhere here I'll go find it on one of these many tutorials that explains exactly how to craft one of these because I mean a through z but not x. Well I can add that in as well with a very specific syntax. Um, you know, if I want to find specific symbols, and if I want to do character sets and spaces, if I want to include spaces. So right here, it's got the same thing. Well, they wrote it in a different order, but it's the same thing. A, 0 through 9, and only A through F. So it'll only accept letters A through F, capital or, or lowercase. Um, and, okay, the, the caret, I guess, is not. Not including these symbols. So if I did want to include these symbols, I would put not the caret. And then what if I'm doing things like uh, single digits, word characters, s matches white space. Okay, it looks like backslash s will allow me to put a space, perhaps. Let's see what happens there. So yeah, it's a very specific thing and I would look up a good resource for it. I, I don't know, this may work, this may not. I'm going to check it. I'm going to say, okay, allow also a space. Um, because maybe I want first name, last name. And we just saw a moment ago that with the current expression that I have, it will remove the space. Mr. Compost with a space kept the space. Um, a moment ago without it, it stripped the space. Does uh, that answer your question, perhaps? So here's one more thing here. If you want spaces to be allowed, backslash s. The numbers, 0 through 9. If I want it just very simply, letters and just letters, uppercase, lowercase, it's just a to z and a to z. The problem with that, of course, is further thinking like a fool, what I could do is, okay, I'm going to type a name, Victor Campos. It did it. It didn't use multiple spaces because it's rendering as HTML. That's good. Um, because we have .html. This was a question early on, I remember. Uh, we were like, well, what if I put multiple spaces? Why doesn't it print on multiple spaces? The point of that, of not fully answering that question at that moment was, because this is being rendered through HTML, and HTML ignores multiple white spaces. So I just put a bunch of white spaces, and it did. Um, Ignore them.
All right, so um, I think that'll be that'll be okay. Then we'll take our break. Um, we've got this input. I still want to account for this. That's not a valid name. It could be someone's uh, username. Sure. How would you even check for that? What if we want a, a certain length? Well, we, we can uh, take what they've written and then slice it to only a certain length if we put it into an array and all this stuff. We can get more complex. This is enough for the moment, though. Any questions? And we'll take a break. Okay, uh, let's take uh, a break at 7.05. We'll come back at 7.15. Then we'll start to talk about... Um, I think we'll do the map next. We'll be back at 7.15.